in the previous video, we've made a login screen and also a logout screen at that, and it's fully functioning right now. The only complaint I still have right now about this code is that it has too much too, too much repeating code, and also a lot of the functionality is built right into this auth.js file, and this file is supposed to only contain the UI components. That is why in today's video, we'll be making hooks, our own custom React hooks, to take refactor of the functionality code away from this UI component into its own hook. So the first thing I'm going to refactor is the logout function because that's the easiest it seems. I'm going to create a folder in our source directory called hooks and I'm going to make a hook here called use logout.js and one of the main requirements of making a custom react hook is we have to start the name of the hook with use. Just like how, just like the convention of how you have to start the, with a capitalized letter as the first letter in a React UI component, so we we're just gonna make use logout, and then we can just take the code here, just take that, and put it here. So function logout, and just put it here. So of course we have to import PB, and we have to also import use state from React, and we can we can make that state variable here and then we can just return logout to the function to the hook function and then here I can just I can just do const logout equals to use logout save that and we have to run this because it's a function that we have to run so yeah everything should work and we have successfully refactored all of the logout code to its separate hook outside of this UI component and if I try it out so if I click on logout, it still works. One thing I've noticed is that our email and our password is still populated and it's still in React state even though we have logged out and we're supposed to be starting a completely new session here. That's because we forgot to reset our form every single time. So we, have, we can destructure a function from use form called reset and we can just go to our, where is our, our login here. We can just call what, reset so that should reset our form if I go to user at gmail.com and one, two, three, four, five, log in. If I go log out and it's no longer populated. All right, now let's refactor the code for log into its own hook as well. I'm going to go to the hooks here and make use login.js. Let's export default function use login. Use login. And then we're going to just grab everything here. I'm going to leave reset. He's still here. I'm not going to grab reset as well because we won't have access to the reset function from our use login hook. So I have to put a function here called async function login and let's close the brackets. And then we have to take our loading state and just grab this and let's put that here. We will also want to grab that. Just put it up here let's see um, so I'm gonna rename the function here from login to on submit and then we can go to our hook here we have to import PB so import PB and we will need access to data so let's go to the login function here and let's grab email as well as password I can get rid of data there and then we can just simply return login and we'll also return is loading and then here we just const login is loading equals to use login and we have to import that as well so import use login and then just call login here and we have to pass data dot email and the password so everything should be working now um, what's oh the error here it's because I have to give email and password their appropriate labels save that so if I go to my page and refresh that I do user at gmail.com one two three four five login and it should work and we've successfully made our own hook for login and logout and we've taken all of the functionality and put it in their own respective hooks of course we could just leave it like this and it's completely fine it's 
perfectly functional, but there's still one thing that I'm not completely happy about our, our use login hook just yet, and that's we are manually creating the is loading state, and we we have like the try catch blocks here, and the code is just kind of clunky in general, and we're gonna be making more calls to the API down the road, and we're gonna be making more hooks to write to the database and stuff, and we we're gonna have to manually create a reloading state every single time we make a new hook for different functionalities and there's try catch blocks and just clunky that's why i'm going to use this hook from react query it's called use mutation and it'll simplify a lot of the code for us and of course use mutation isn't the only hook that i'm going to be using from react query i'm going to be using this other hook co called use query as well but that's for some later videos so in today's video i'll just be showing you how you can use mute the use the use mutation hook to simplify a lot of this code so first we're gonna have to install the react query library and we just have to do yarn add react dash query and that should install a react query and in react query we can just import we can just import use mutation from react query and just restart the server so here, instead of returning our object that contains the login function and the is loading state, I can just return use mutation. And use mutation takes in, I believe it takes in here. Okay, let's just look at the syntax real quick. It takes in here, it takes in mutation function as the first argument and a bunch of options, and that's optional. So the mutation function is going to be the function that we're going to call to basically post a request to the server, and that's our login function. So I can just put login in here. And the use mutation, this use mutation hook is going to return a bunch of things that we can use, and that includes is loading here. You see, it automatically generates that loading state for us. So as long as we pass in an asynchronous function to the as the mutation function, it'll automatically detect the loading state. And so that means we can just get rid of our loading state code in here, and use mutation will just deal just handle that for us. And I believe the way that works is somewhere in use mutations code, it'll do something like, oh, await, login. And then once our login is done, it'll set is loading to true automatically so we don't have to deal with that. And then another thing it'll do is it'll wrap try and catch blocks around our, our mutation function automatically. And so we can get rid of that as well. And look how clean our code looks now. It's Everything's gone. It's just the core functionality that remains and we don't have to deal with the errors. So the way the way errors are returned back to us is here, instead of having the login function, it's going to be called a generic mutate. And basically whatever function you put in here, use mutation will just output as mutate. It's still the same function, but it's like wrapped around the the use mutation functionality. So we can just put mutate there. Is loading remains the same. There's still is loading and that's coming from the use mutation hook. And also use mutation hook gives us is error. And that's a property that we can use to detect if there's an error. And let me just check where my error, where's, where's my, okay, I have to manually make that error message now. So we can just come here. Where's the paragraph text here? It says loading. We can just say if error, if is error is true, then you can just say invalid email or password. You could style this to be like red, just to be fancy. So color would be just like red. And then here, instead of calling that login, we'll just rename that to mutate. It's a generic name. Or you could just rename mutate to login again. And that way we can reuse the name as login. And yeah, I believe that should work. And if I go and refresh this, I just Oh, no, no query client set. So we have to fix that error. So that's a, that's, if you go to react queries page and you go to quick start, it'll teach you how you can set up the provider. So I believe you have to wrap your app in the query client provider. And that's just something that <laughs> react query requires from you. So we have to go to our, let's just go to index.js here and just query provider. And just put that here wrap our app with query client provider and it has to take in client so client let's look at how the docs do it they have to make you have to instantiate a new client i guess so we can come up here just do query client equals a new query client we have to import that so query client this is just some boilerplate that comes with react query you just set it up once and it'll be good to go forever so I'm going to save that. Let's go back and refresh. If I click log out and then now I try to log in, I can just log in with a fake email 
just click login we should see invalid email or password and that way we know that our is error state is working and it's coming from our use mutation hook which is here use mutation and also if i try to put an actual user enter and you can see it works and you saw that the loading state was working as well despite us not having any you can just get rid of the state despite us not having any code to deal with the loading state it still works and use mutation is awesome in that sense